Hey everyone, this is Rochelle. Thanks for clicking on my video. And this video that I'm going to do today, I debated about doing it and um, thought about what I would call the video um, because of the content of the video. So I came up with the title, What Do You Know? And um, this video is to those 20 somethings out there and this video probably will get a lot of dislikes and get a couple or a few of these 20 somethings a little upset now what inspired me to do this video is I am subscribed to quite a few people out there I'm subscribed to men, women of all ages. You know, if I see a video that they do that catches my interest, I will subscribe to them until their content no longer interests me. And then I'll move on to someone, you know, that does. You know, YouTube is a very big place, so your choices are limitless. So, the reason why I want to do a video to some of these 20 somethings, I have watched a few of them and you know, when they come on and they discuss things that are going on in the world or just life in general. And one thing I noticed about this, this generation of 20 somethings, and this is where it's going to get a little aggravating to them they think they know everything I'm just gonna put that out there first and let you marinate on that they think they know everything and now I'm gonna go back to when I was in my late 20s early 30s I at 27 to 30 had one child I was in a marriage and I was living my life I had gone to college and that's where I was at 30 I had my daughter so at that point I had two kids um, a home that we owned and we were just living our little young life you know every day going to work paying our bills and trying to raise our two children but when I look back on that person that I was between the ages of 25 and I'm just going to say 35, I'm going to give myself that. What I thought I knew, I didn't know. Because now that I am the age that I am now, I can look back objectively. I'm not getting all caught up in my feelings because someone is telling me that I don't know what I think I know. When I was that age, I respected my elders and I respected the wisdom that they brought to the table. If I was to be in a conversation with a woman that was the age that I am now, and she was dropping some knowledge on me about life. I listened intently because I respected my elders. And also because I knew that they were not imparting their wisdom on me to put me in my place as a youngin. They were doing it because they cared about me. And they wanted me to understand that my view of the world might not be right because I was a little young. Also too, during those, that age period that I gave you, I made mistakes. I said things and did things that when I look back now that I'm older, I realize that I made those mistakes because I was so young and that, you know, I was learning on the job. I was experiencing things for the first time. 
So I had come to crossroads where there were decisions to be made. And in some of those decisions or things that I said, I did the right thing. And then in others, I did the wrong thing. But having traveled life's roads now, I realized that, you know, I did make mistakes. And I'm adult enough now to admit that. Also, too, during that time, I did not sit up and talk about like um, the generation before me or the, the two generations before me, meaning my mom's generation and my grandma's generation. And the reason why is because when they were younger, things were different than from when I was a young woman. When my grandma was younger, things were different than when my mother was younger. So the things that shaped each of those two women were different from the things that shaped me. Each successive generation was a little bit more prosperous than the one before. And let me give you an example. My grandmother was born in the 1920s. Pretty much during that time, black folks were still living through Jim Crow. And a lot of it that they were taught was, you keep your head down and you work hard and you'll get ahead, don't make waves. You know? My mother's generation was the kick-ass generation. She's the generation that came about during the 60s and they said, hell no, we're not keeping our heads down. We're gonna take what we want. And they were the generation that fought for civil rights. Now, previous generations had done so also, but in the 60s, our fight for civil rights took this country to another level with riots and all the things that, that happened during, those, during that decade. My generation reaped the benefits of what my mother, my mother's generation and my grandma's generation fought for. So our struggle wasn't so hard. Our parents were able to give us things that they never had. So it made us a little, little less, you know, I guess, paying attention to what we didn't have and what we couldn't get and where we couldn't live. So we got a little, a little spoiled. Okay. And then the generation that came after me, which would be my children, they are the 20 somethings. They are two generations removed from the civil rights movement. They are three generations from Jim Crow. And basically, they don't really want to hear about it. You have celebrities on television now talking about they're not black or they're mixed, Lil Bow Wow. There are celebra celebrities on social media and television talking about they're not voting. You know, no regard to the people who literally gave their lives for them to vote. You have these little young 20 somethings trying to tell people who have lived life, you know, their, their elders that are in their 40s and 50s, what life is about. What life is about. When you have lived to the age of 40, 50, 60, you have lived some life. You have done some things. We did not sit up and tell our parents, you know, well, when you were growing up, you know, you may not have gone, had this or that and the other. Basically, we weren't disrespectful. And these 20 somethings may say, well, you raised us. And yes, they're right. We did raise them. We raised them 
with all the things that we had gotten to the point that they were born, meaning civil rights, the right to live wherever we live, we wanted to live, uh, work where we wanted to work, and just all the things that they benefited from that they don't seem to appreciate. They don't appreciate the knowledge that we have. They don't appreciate the struggles that previous generations went through. Oh, they'll say that they do, but they really don't. You know, they really don't. And they've taken all the things that we have provided them and now they use it against us. We have given them to the ability to go to the universities and colleges of their choices. We have been given them the ability to serve in the armed forces without being, you know, potato pillars as my grandfather basically was. You know, he was able to serve in the military, but he had to fight to get any type of position that didn't require him to work in a kitchen or clean a ship or something. You know, he had to fight and damn near die for just being an intelligent black man that wanted to do more than peel up a, da a damn potato. But these young people now, they don't realize that. Oh, they sit up on YouTube and just, you, you hear them with their, their education and their this and their that. And sometimes I chuckle at how arrogant they are and how they think they know everything. Now, when we tell them something like this, I'd like to see you in 30 years. I'd like to see you at 57, talk to the 27 year old of yourself. I'd like to see you at 60, talk to the 30 year old of yourself. The one thing that older folks have is the benefit of being able to look in the rear view mirror of their life and realize and be adult enough and mature enough to admit when they're wrong. When you're in your 20s and 30s, oh no, you cannot be wrong. Oh no, you just know more than your parents because you've been given more. You don't respect that that generational maturity that they have above you. You want to take that and use it against them. I think it's sad. And I'm the type of mom that um, I constantly remind my children, I gave birth to you. You did not give birth to me. I was a thinking, breathing, educated human being before you was even a thought in your daddy's mind. I have to remind them on several occasions because yes, they are of this generation and they don't believe that their mother knows more than what they do. But I remind them constantly. I even have a son that I will be telling a story about when he was two or three years old and he's telling me how it was. And I, I have to look at him and say, you were in diapers. You didn't even know who you were, let alone able to recount a specific situation of where we lived, what furniture we had, this, that, and the other. But now you're telling me? You know, I don't know, you know, if us being able to give them the things that we never had, if if us being able to give them a life that we never had and always wanting the best for them and allowing them to get away with things that we weren't allowed to get away with has ruined them. I don't know if not teaching them the respect for elders, the respect for history has ruined them making them sit down and watch documentaries like our parents did, making them sit down and watch movies like Roots and as they watch it, explain it to them, making them understand who our civil rights leaders are and what their 
sacrifices meant to their lives. Because a lot of times those people that lived before us, they knew that they were not going to benefit for what from what they were possibly fighting for. They knew that their fight may benefit future generations, that, but they might have to die to get whatever rights they were fighting for. These kids do not appreciate that. And sometimes I say, oh, it, it upsets me, but actually it pisses me off. It actually pisses me off to sit here on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and watch them put out remarks that, you know, or statements or do videos that, you know, you sit there and you kind of chuckle because I say, you know, they don't even know what they're talking about. They have no idea about life. I got clothes older than them. And, and that's a true statement. I have a prom dress. I have a, you know, not a wedding dress or anything like that because I had a house fire and I lost a lot of things. Thanks God. Thank God my mother had some things at her house where I still have some, you know, article of clothing, articles of clothing that I had when I was younger. But I have, you know, clothes that are older than them. And they want to sit up and tell me about life. When if you're in your 20s, you just really got out of high school less than 10 years ago. And you think you know something or can tell me something about life. I remember being their age. And I would literally be sitting at my grandmother's kitchen table and my grandmother would be cooking and she would be telling me things about when she was younger. And she would say, see, you you young girls, you have it easy because when I was younger, this, that, and other, and I had to walk a mile here and go there and do this and that. And I was one of those kids that those stories for me made me appreciate my grandmother and it made me see her as more than my grandma her stories for me brought to life a person that i did not know a young person her at a young age and what she thought and what she felt and how did she get to be the grandma that i knew how was she able to raise these kids how was she able to do all of this you know these kids nowadays, they think they know everything. Oh my God, they're so arrogant. And um, as I tell my kids, there are some things that, you know, especially with technology, that I do go to them for. Or I do ask their opinion about, you know, things that are going on in the world. But by no means does that mean that I think that they know more about life than what I do. Now, their education, because of what I was able to give them, may have been a little bit more than what my parent has give, was able to give me. The neighborhoods that they grew up in may have been a little bit more prosperous than the neighborhoods that my parents were able to put me in so that meant that they were in better schools all of that contributes to the person that they are you know all of that everything that's in your environment when you grow up contributes to the person that you are so these 20 somethings and you know I'm going to even put the ones that are in their early 30s because I think by the time you get to about 35 you start to really question your life your your existence here on earth and what you think and what you believed and how life wasn't what you thought it was around 35 you start kind of really taking a closer look at your life then once you get around 40 you start really, really, you know, getting into, you know, 
maybe life is not what I thought it was going to be. Or you say, you know, my life is much better than what I could have ever dreamed that it would be. 40 is that magical age where you've, you're halfway or, you know, nowadays you're just beginning maybe to have children. But 40 is an age where if you have a career, you're well established, established in your career. You've owned a home. You've, you've started raising children and, you know, you're well on your way. And you've lived some life so you can stand and talk about the years that you have behind you. You're not someone that who has been out of high school less than 10 years. I mean, really, you haven't even gone to your 10 year high school reunion and you want to talk about life and what it means. And, and, you know, that's good amongst your friends, your peers, people that are your age, because when I was younger, that's what we did. We talked about life and what was going on in the world, but in no time when I was in my late twenties, early thirties, did I stand to a person that was a generation, you know, above me and tell them what, you know, what they were or were not, or try to give them some advice on life and what it was like to be a woman. There is no way I could have done that or would have done that. I would have looked like a silly little girl to them. They would have chuckled and, you know, just shook their head and walked away, you know, as the older generation will do. And they do that because they know that you have so much life to live. The person that you are at 28 is not the person that you'll be at 38. The person that you are at 38 is not the person that you'll be at 48. And I'm pretty sure that there are people out there at those different ages that will tell you what I thought at 28. God, I didn't think it at 38. And what I thought at 38, oh, geez, I didn't think it at 48. And so on and so on and so on. My grandmother just celebrated her 91st birthday. 91 and when my grandmother walked up with her little walker and she sat down and all of the hoopla had died down and I kept look, looking at my grandmother to see if she was happy with everything that was done and all of the the surprises that we had for her and there was a little children's uh well teenager a uh, little orchestra that serenaded her. And I remember looking over at my grandma and she looked kind of sad. You know, we were all happy that, you know, we've had a grandmother that is almost a hundred years old and she's still here and she has no major illnesses other than a little arthritis, but she's still with us. But when I looked at my grandmother, my grandmother looked kind of sad. So I remember going over and sitting down beside her and giving her a great big hug. And, you know, I kind of asked her, I said, are you having a good time? And then, you know how older people are? She said, it's nice, baby. Not, you know, too thrilled or not that she wasn't thrilled but you know she's been through a lot this is another this is a 91st birthday for her so we sat there and we talked a little bit and eventually my grandmother got around to I guess what was troubling her and what she told me is that everybody that grew up with her all her friends all her siblings her mother they were gone and it was just her. And she said, nobody remembers the things that I remember. Nobody has seen all that I've seen. And, and she said, I feel lonely. Now here's a woman who was sitting there with 10 living children. She had a total of 12, but she had 10 living children. 
and scores and scores of nieces and nephews and cousins and just just it was just a beautiful event but when I drove back that night what my grandmother told me just it really settled on my on my brain and I, I thought about it I said what must it be like to have lived 91 years and and you have memories that none of the people that were at that celebration have you have gone through things that those people at that celebration had no concept of I remember my grandmother telling me that she actually cooked on a coal stove a stove that she had coal delivered to her home every other day no person there had ever cooked on a stove with coal that is the difference between the generations that is us looking at you and saying you don't know what I know until you get to my age you will never know and all we're asking is for you to respect your elders respect that they have lived longer they have walked more of life life's highways and byways and been through things do not look at the person that you see today look at the journey that it took them to get there it is easy for you to sit up and critique your your parents generation you don't know what they've gone through you only know what they told you you don't know the hurts that they've been through the struggles that they have unless they tell you all of that the neighborhoods that they grew up in the schools that they went to the friends that they had the people that they interacted with all of that shaped the mother that you are looking at today all of that shaped the generation that was before you so I say how dare you tell us about life you haven't lived enough life to tell them anything again you have been out of school high school less than 10 years and you want to tell us about life really I will talk to some of those folks that and I tell my kids this too I said you're my son is 29 now so I'd like to talk to him when he's 39 see if he has the same ideas that he has now my daughter is 21 I'd like to talk to her when she's 31 to see if she's the same woman that she is today that's all we're saying and with that I'm gonna get out of here you guys have a wonderful day and thanks for listening to my ramblings and I've probably offended some 20 something year olds or some early 30 something year olds but you know what you'll get over it trust me I've lived long enough to to know that <laughs> you have a great day